After you have set up your space, keeping in mind that you want to grab a variety of brushes. I like these flat brushes personally. Um, they make nice wide strokes if you go this way, or you can turn them on their side and you can get a narrow, skinnier stroke. So it kind of is like two brushes in one. So I grabbed three different ones. Obviously, if you're working on big areas, you're gonna use your bigger brush. And when you get to smaller areas, you're gonna use your smaller brush. We just finished doing some color study and some paint mixing. And so my expectation is that you guys are gonna mix your own colors. We do have a lot of different colors in the bottles, but I really want you guys to push yourselves out of your comfort zone and really uh, start mixing your own colors. So one way to do this is you can mix your colors right on the paper. So I'm gonna do this now using my big brush, kind of using some fast strokes and I'm going to just lay down some paint really quick. And what you can do is grab an analogous color, so a color that is next to that color on the color wheel. Right now I have kind of this yellowish orange and I have orange and I'm going to layer them together. And you'll notice I'm gonna paint a little bit over my lines here and that's okay because I know ahead of time that this hill or tree line is going to be a darker color. So it will cover up that orange. And then I can kind of take my brush, get a little wet and go back and forth and get those to blend. Okay, so water can help you blend. And I can go back in with my lighter color and layer that on. So that's one way you could just mix your colors right on your paper. You also will have your palette with you, so if you want to mix on your palette, you can. I'm doing a kind of a fiery color sky. We're gonna assume that either it's sunrise or sunset here. And so it's gonna be the lighter yellow, and that's changing to this yellowish orange to an orange. And maybe I'll just slow my brush strokes down a little bit and add some more orange here. And then I'm switching. Now I'm, I was pulling down, and now I'm gonna go back over and pull up. And that just kind of sends some of that orange back up into that yellowy orange mix. You can even do a big, big one right there. <laughs> pull it all the way off. All right, and now I'm gonna grab this touch of, it's like a red violet. And I'm going to pull down with the red violet and then go back over it, pulling up. Okay, and so I have a big pop of color, big change right away. Now with water, if you have a landscape and you have water, the sky colors usually tend to reflect in your water. And so I would use my colors in reverse then. And so this first color that I would see through my water would be that red violet. I'll speed through this real quick, just working in reverse, going red violet to orange to yellow orange. Now this is just a really rough um, start to this. You're gonna go back in and you're gonna add details. So you work biggest areas to smallest. You are mixing your own colors. If you make any mistakes, like, you know, some people might not have wanted to paint over that mountain line. The trick is, if you make a mistake, you let that area dry. Trying to fix it when, it, when it's wet, it could be tricky. Like if I wanted to fix that right away, and I'm trying to layer in some dark green over that orange, it might mix and make a mess, and I wouldn't quite get the effect I want. But by letting it dry, this already is almost dry, and so I can put in those green trees or green foothills, and it's not gonna mix with the orange. It will just lay right on top of that old layer. So that's the nice part about painting. If you make a mistake, just leave it. Work in another area for a little while. Okay, so let's go in here. And since my sky is all lit up, this is probably gonna appear a little bit darker. I don't have a green on my palette, so I'm going to mix a green. And I want you guys to remember your tints, tones, and shades. 
So if I'm just using the straight colors, it's not going to make as big of an impact as if I started to add some black in. And I'm kind of blobbing this on just to get a little bit of a texture here. All right, so I'm going to lay down some green real quick. And you can see some of my old color showing through right now, which is okay because we're going to do a few layers. Texture is a good thing you can add just by moving my brush up and down. I'm going to grab a little bit of black here and start kind of dabbing and working in some black. Okay, and as this layer dries, I can come back over it and do another layer and I can just enhance what I have here. It takes a lot of layers to work in these foothills, just trying to vary the tints and the shades to capture the light. I then went back and I decided that my sky and water were too intense, so I painted over with some white, working in the opposite direction. I added some directional clouds to try to move your eye in. And then using my skinny brushes, I add those last details in. You want your paint to be dry when you're trying to add really small details. It makes it, uh, the lines more crisp. 